Hello and welcome to battle report number 18. So we've finally at long last made it to the Scottish Championships. Uh, this was played a couple months ago now, so my memory of uh, what went on might be a little bit rusty, but I've got pictures and notes so we should get, get on okay. Um, so if you haven't watched any of my practice games talking about what's different about the Scottish Championships, uh, this tournament is going to be 5,000 points. So slightly upscaled from the normal um, uh, standard points level that uh, Ninth Age games are played at, uh, which makes list building a little bit more difficult. You've got a little bit more space in characters, you've got to take a little bit more core and army specific uh, categories such as like airborne gallantry for uh, Kingdom of Equitain get a little bit bigger. So it makes uh, list building a little bit strange. So I've got practice games talking about what have changed with that. Um, so if you're up to date with those, uh, you'll know what I've gone through for this list. Uh, and if you watch the previous one, you will recognize this list because uh, this is what, uh, well, n not my list, you'll, you'll recognize the opponent's list um, as they were my final practice game. We played our practice game and then the draw, draw for round one happened and uh, we'd essentially been grudged against one another, which was exciting, uh, especially considering the... Um, it was a decent victory in, in, on my behalf, so um, exciting to have a rematch and see if I can repeat it or, uh, or whether it all goes horribly wrong. Uh, so let's take a look at the lists. Uh, so this is slightly different to the one in my last game, but as this is the first game of the tournament, I'll go through it properly anyway. Uh, so first of all, I've got a Duke on a Bard of Warhorse with a shield, enchanted with the Fortress of Faith, which gives him rerolls of ones to hit, to wound, and on armor saves. He's got a Lance, enchanted with Supernatural Dexterity, giving him plus two offensive and uh, agility. Uh, he's got Basalt Infusion for plus one armor, and a three up, ward save, a three up Ages against Flaming Attacks, and Obsidian Rock for MR2, Virtue of Might, which gives him plus one strength, AP, and attack on the charge, and creates new attacks when he does a unsaved wound. And the Questing Oath and Bastard Sword, which gives him plus two offense, uh, plus two advance on the charge against models that cause fear, and plus one to hit models that cause fear. Uh, so, very standard Might Duke build. Uh, next up, I've got uh, my General, who's another Duke. He's on a Barded Warhorse with a shield, Crusader Salvation, so one up reroll of armor save with that. Uh, a hand weapon enchanted with the hero's heart, so he's got 5 strength, 5 AP3 attacks. Uh, he's got the crystal ball for plus 1 uh, dispelling against a particular caster in the opponent's list. Uh, the virtue of valor, which um, means I have to always issue duels, the duels always have to be accepted, and I get rerolls to hit and to wound in those, in those duels. And then he's got the grail oath, so plus 1 offensive and defensive, he's fearless and he always has a 5 plus Aegis. So he should be pretty tough with a 1-up rerollable and a 5-plus Aegis. Uh, next up I've got my caster. I've got a damsel who's on a barded warhorse. She's a wizard master of druidism and she's got the magical heirloom to take the hereditary. Uh, then I've got my paladin BSB. He's on a war barded warhorse with a shield. Uh, his standard is enchanted with an aether icon for MR1. He's got a lance with the wormwood core to give me a little bit of flaming and a, a breath weapon. Uh, he's got the Questing Oath and Bastard Sword and a Potion of Strength. Um, I found, well, I think my thinking behind that was um, after the first round of combat and once he uses his Breath Weapon, I'm, I might want something that adds a little bit of an oomph. Uh, and if I'm using a Potion of Strength, I should be hitting a monster. So I should have a higher weapon skill. Then I get plus one to hit it. So I should be hitting on twos, wounding on twos, and then I get to do the Crush Attack. Uh, which was my thinking behind that. And it's only 10 points, so I had the points left over to try and put that in. Uh, next up in core, I've got a Knight's Aspirant Lance. Uh, they've got full command and uh, the Banner of the Last Charge for the full 15 impact hits. Uh, two lots of six Knights of the Realm with full command, uh, a unit of eight Knights of the Grail with full command and a Stalker's Standard, ten Knights of the Quest with full command and Stalker's Standard. Uh, I've managed to squeeze in the Green Knight at 5,000 points, and then finally, I've got two units of Yeoman Outriders with shields, light armor, and bows. Um, so my opponent's list is playing, uh, he's playing Demon Legions. He's got three Greater Demons. Um, the Miser of Sugulag with the, uh, he's the general, so he's got the Greater Dominion, which is plus two defensive when in base contact with an enemy unit with scoring. He's a Wizard Apprentice of Divination with Mirrored Scales, so uh, works like Deadly Repost, I think. So when I roll ones to hit, it hits myself. 
Uh, more of a Khan, where he's a wizard apprentice of evocation with an iron husk, so he's resilient seven. A courtesan of Sibiresh, who's also a wizard apprentice, this time of witchcraft, with the iron husk again, so resilient six. Uh, in core, we've got a unit of ten Lemuries with unnatural roots and standard bearer. Uh, four units of ten Myrmidons with unhinging jaw and champion, so unhinging jaw is something for monsters or towering presence. Um, nothing that affects my list. Uh, the Hope Harvester, which is the Engine of Damnation with Sorcerer's Antenna, so that gives the model Channel 1, and Engine of Damnation is the really big base, so the 150mm uh, by 100mm, and it ups its hit points and resilience, I believe. Uh, two Naked Blazing Glories, uh, a unit of three Veil Serpents with a champion, so that's a, uh, a wizard adapt, adapt there, that's a wizard conclave. And finally, three bloat flies, again with unhinging jaw and a champion. So as I said in my last game, um, the two blazing glories are pretty difficult for me to deal with, uh, mixed with uh, divinations, know thine enemy, and the greater dominion of plus two defensive. Uh, and then their strength five, AP five, and of course my armor's only five, but that's pretty much what I'm relying on to keep me alive. They're going to be a, a sod to deal with. And then that mixed with four other single models and then two units of light troops one has fly it's a difficult unit to, uh, it's a difficult list to pin down and a difficult list to get any points out of um any, any meaningful points anyway unless you can manage to beat up one of the greatest demons um so let's take a look at the fields and stuff uh, so this is just post vanguard uh, i've moved I had initially put that unit of yeoman on the right hand side, I thought with the hill there uh, and the impassable with the Scottish flag I might be able to squeeze myself through for the secondary. Um, speaking of which, we were playing Frontline Clash and Breakthrough, so normally very good for me, uh, but it's got lots of very small units um, of scoring as well. So. I wasn't sure about the secondary, I knew he'd have lots of units and lots of single models to turn around and deal with my scoring if they managed to sneak past them. I had hoped that I'd deploy it on the right hand side there uh, and just go use the um, impassable as a shield from everything on the left, go straight through there, but as I was deploying first I didn't want to deploy anything too heavy there and him just put say the more of a Khan opposite and then I have to try and get through that and that'll take me some time. So. I decided instead, with my two Stalker standards, I can essentially ignore those ruins, um, and I can deploy on the, on the left. Um, but I had to move my Yeoman Knight Riders back towards the left, uh, away from where I had initially been deploying. Um, up on his side, he's got his ten Lemuries, um, or then the both Blazing Glories, there, both Blazing Glories, his uh, Miser, then the Moor, the Veil Serpents, uh, the Engine of Damnation, then the Courtesan, the Bloat Flies, and then all four units of Myrmidons on the far side ready to score break Breakthrough. So it's going to be very difficult for me to get back over there and catch that because all of those central units are very quick. Um, so uh, this point with how I've done... I don't know whether I could have done deployment better. I probably could have. I'm not sure how I would do. Um, but I... I've essentially given away the secondary objective here. I don't, it's going to be difficult for me to get through. Unless I can get three units through and just draw it. Uh, so, demons take the first turn. Um, and we go to uh, their moves. So, um, much like in the last game with me deploying heavily on one flank, he's able to move very aggressively on one side uh, and kind of shuffle around on the, uh, on the, on the flank facing me directly. Uh, so the Lemuries on the left move straight up to the wall to get distracting in case I make a long charge into them. Uh, with parry, distracting, resilience 5, two static combat res, they're going to be sh difficult to shift. And then they've got all of those, both Great Demons and both, both Blazing Glories uh, sitting there watching for any counter charges in case I do go for that. Uh, the Engine of Damnation, the Bloatflies and the Courtesan move up a little bit more aggressively um, and take up positions on the wall. Uh, and the four units of Myrmidons start their trek towards the secondary objective. Um, there's not an awful lot that goes on in magic or shooting. I don't know whether he was out of range with the shooting or whether it was just that he marched. I don't know whether it's got march and fire. Either way, nothing happens in shooting and in magic he gets spectral blades off on the bloat flies. And we go to Equitain turn one. Uh, so I move up very aggressively with my 
Grail Knights. I need to get shifting if I want to get through this flank, I think. So, um, ignoring the terrain that I'm in, uh, I shuff like, I'm not worried about the Lemuries. I've got enough static combat res. They're not going to break my steadfast. I should just duel the champion, kill the champion, get static combat res that way. So I, I don't need to worry about that. But um, I do drop the Green Knight now um, as a way of... Because he ignores parry, that, that's a, a good use of him. If he decides not to charge, then I can charge the Green Knight in there, grind through that, uh, and then I'm free to do what I like with my other units. I'm a little bit more cautious with my Aspirants and my Questing Knights. With... Both the Miser, well, the, the Miser, the Moor, and the Blazing Glory are all Swift Stride because they're beasts, and they've got an advance rate of 7 or 8 for all of those units. So I didn't want to get too close just yet. As much as I need to be pushing up, I, I wasn't sure about giving him a long charge. So I was a little bit more uh, cautious there. Um, on the other flank, I move up one unit of Yeoman Outriders to stop the courtesan and the engine of damnation from getting too close to my lines just yet um it's just, especially the um the courtesan if it gets to move up in there and then gets a raven's wing i mean there, there's not an awful lot i can do about that really uh, i can just do my best to make it awkward for him to move in a straight line um straight towards me or make any long charges towards me so um I chuff up there, uh, I move the other unit back a little bit out of range of any magical shooting or long charges. Uh, the unit of six Knights of the Realm on the right also cover the flank of the Aspirants, just in case the Bloatflies go, decide to go for a long charge, because of course they've still got Fly. Post magic and shooting, um, obviously my shooting doesn't do anything, because I've only got ten bows, of which seven can fire, and it's all at long range, so nothing from shooting, but in magic I get off the hereditary on my grail knights to give them re-rolls of ones uh, and i'll get off the oaken throne so demon's turn two uh he puts the bloat flies into my chaff there uh the blazing glory on the left the crown i forgot to mention is the dominion from the miser uh, so again plus two defensive skill against uh, units when he's in base contact with an enemy scoring unit uh, so that blazing glory goes into the front of my grail knights and the Lemuries come in uh, as support to bring in com uh, static combat res. So post charges, of course he makes all of those in, uh, and then post moves. Uh, he shuffles back a little bit with the Miser and the Moor. Uh, the Blazing Glory moves off to the left to cover the unit of Knights of the Realm coming through for secondary objective. Uh, the Courtesan doesn't want to get anywhere too close too quickly, so just sneaks around my Yeoman for now. The Myrmidons carry on their trek. And we go to magic. So he gets off Smite the Unbeliever and Deceptive Glamour on my Grail Knights. So I can't remember whether it was Strength or Resilience. I think it was probably Resilience. Uh, and a couple of minuses to my Offensive and Defensive skill as well. Uh, which isn't good. As we go into combat, so nothing happens in shooting. We go through to combat... And you might notice that the one model that I'm missing there is my Valaduke, who is my general. Which is really bad news, considering losing that. Uh, well, at the top of turn one is really not very good for me. <laughs> um, so, of course, Valaduke has to issue a duel that has to be accepted. So the Blazing Glory goes in, accepts my duel because it counts as a character for the purposes of duels. Uh, he strikes long before me. Or do I strike first? Um, I think we strike simultaneously. I don't manage to do anything to him. Either way, I don't manage to... I either don't strike or I don't do anything to the Blazing Glory. Uh, he hits me back, and with my... With the Deceptive Glamour and Smite the Unbeliever on there, uh, he manages to put four wounds through on me, I think. Um, I have... It's AP5, I've got Armor 6, so I get a 6-up Armor save, re-rollable, followed by 5-plus Aegis, and I think I fail all of them. Um... <laughs> which was pretty well i i mean you know that's quite a tall order to ask the uh the duke there to survive that but um it was the fact that i was hitting back on well, i was offensive five and he's defensive 12 at this point so i'm hitting him on sixes even with re-rolls i'm not putting enough hits on him um and then i'm only wounding him on fours even with re-rolls again so i didn't have enough offensive capability there to deal with the blazing glory and he just killed me outright which was 
pretty brutal. Um, I do hold on steadfast. I've got my BSB there. Um, so steadfast date with a reroll, I'm fine. Um, but a bit disappointing to lose my general so early on. Um, so uh, post combat reform as well. He's shifted his Lemuries out wide. Um, it doesn't make a difference for rank bonuses. I've managed to kill one of the Lemuries with the Grail Knights by the looks of things, but uh, it does stop my Knights of the Realm from simply charging through that unit um, out to the other side. Or, or stops me moving up that flank towards the uh, the Blazing Glory onto the hill. Uh, onto the wall, rather. So, going into my turn two, um, I move up onto the wall with my uh, Questing Knights. Um, I charge the Might Duke out of the Questing Knights into the side of the Blazing Glory. Uh, the Green Knight goes into the Lemuries, and the Knights of the Realm also go in as well. So... I've taken this screenshot a little bit early, so I've only got the one unit of Yeoman, and they are packed up where you see them there. Uh, again, chaffing up the Courtesan of Sibiresh. Um I didn't want him charging the flank of the Aspirants. I didn't want him going into the flank of anything else. Uh, I'm not sure whether I needed to chaff last turn, or maybe this turn. Um, I think I, I used my chaff quite cheaply this game, potentially. But again, I think that may have been a symptom of potentially quite poor deployment. deployment. Um... Anyway, so magic. Uh, I get the oaken thrown off again. Uh, I put entwining roots on the blazing glory there, and I think everything else is dispelled. Uh, so post combat, uh, I managed to put four wounds onto the blazing glory. I think he issued a duel, uh, and I had to accept with the might dupe to do anything meaningful with him. So he accepted that and went through and put four wounds on there, which was disappointing as I was hoping to go straight through that unit. But uh, better four wounds so I can finish him off next turn at the very least. Um, I go, I kill through all of the Lemuries, or at least I wipe it out after the Supernal check. And I choose to overrun with the Knights of the Realm, hoping that I'd get the correct roll to land on the wall, rather than sitting too far away, because even where I had been sitting, that's still quite a short charge for the blazing glory so i figured do an overrun i might end up on the wall i might end up closer to him that's better where i am at the moment so uh, i went for that landed up on the wall which was lucky so demons turn three uh, a whole host of charges this time he puts the myrmidons around the sibere uh, around the courtesan into the yeoman uh, which i hold uh, and then the Engine of Damnation goes in, and because it's gigantic, I think, it causes terror. Uh, I fail my terror check, and they panic off the board. Which, you know, a pain from my chaff to just move out the way, but uh, that's that's fine, I can deal with that. Um, you know, that that's poor placement on my part, but um, it's not the end of the world. Uh, but that gives him the opportunity to redirect the Engine of Damnation into my Aspirants, uh, the courtesan goes into the y Knights of the Realm on the right, and the Bloatflies uh, declare a charge onto the flank of the Aspirants as well. So if he makes any of these charges, it's potentially going to be rather bad for me. Thankfully though, only the courtesan make it into, makes it into the front of the uh, Knights of the Realm. Uh, so with the courtesan going in there, I'm going to have a banner. I probably won't be steadfast because he's going to kill at least one of me, but... Yeah, uh, it, it's it's not looking good for me at the moment. Basically, um, having lost my general, I'm I've lost the secondary objective. It's 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 looking poor for me. But at the very least, he has failed those charges. So the rest of his moves, the Myrmidons keep moving towards the objective. The miser and the moor back off considerably. The blazing glory up in the top left doesn't want to take a charge. Doesn't want to charge me. So shuffles up to make it a little bit more difficult for my knights of the realm to go in there. Post magic and shooting, um, he gets off Know Thine Enemy, by the looks of things. It looks as though the spell card is underneath the uh, Engine of Damnation, but it is on there. And he gets off um, Deceptive Glamour on the Knight's Aspirant. Uh, post combat as well, um, the Courtesan's charging into my Knight's the Realm there. I've issued a duel with my champion to kind of mitigate my losses, uh, try and keep as many of my guys alive as possible. Um, he has killed me, I've not done any wounds to him, but I think I lost combat by three? I don't think he did an awful lot of wounds to me. So, he had a charge, a kill, an overkill, and I've got a banner, so I lose by two, plus fear, and I managed to pass my discipline five or four check or whatever it was. 
which is very lucky on my part. So I've now potentially, with having dealt with that Blazing Glory on the left, uh, I've potentially got some charges with my Might Duke into the flank of the Courtesan to try and deal with that, uh, which is nice. Uh, so going into my turn of three, uh, that's what I go for. I charge the Knight's Aspirant into the Engine of Damnation. I've got three ranks, a banner, I've got a load of impact hits, I've got a load of strength five attacks. I'm hoping I just, just blow through this in one go. Um, it's going to be a little bit difficult because I'm hitting on fives, but potentially with magic support and with the static combat res that I'm bringing in, that might go, go okay. And at the very least, I need to move the Aspirants out of the way for the Might Duke to come over and deal with the Courtesan. Uh, it looks like I've taken a wound going through the ruins there, um, but I did at least make it into the side there. Uh, with the Questing Oath, that helped me make that charge. I don't think I would have been able to make it otherwise. Uh, post moves. So I move up very aggressively with my Knights of the Realm on the left. Um, I decide that they're going to need to act as bait or chaff for the Blazing Glory. Either it'll ignore them and I can use that unit to score. Uh, or it'll charge into the Realm Knights and then I can counter charge with either, quest, either the Quests or the Grails. Um, the Green Knight moves over to the right to support the Might Duke and the Realms down there fighting to try and salvage the objective potentially um it's not gone as horrible well i've pushed back the more the more and the miser i've not had to fight them but i have broken through on this left flank so if i can keep enough of my units alive and get through to the secondary objective and potentially deal with one or two of the scoring down here potentially it won't be so bad for me uh, so that's what i'm trying to go for um post magic I get the Hereditary and Entwining Roots off on the Aspirant's Combat, so he's now Offensive and Defensive 4 again. I'm defense, Offensive and Defensive 1, I think, um, but at the very least this is now hitting on 4s. Um, I think he's still striking before me, but it's a slightly better combat than it had been before, and having rerolls is going to be really useful as well, especially for his attacks back as well. Just, like, you know, any any bonus I can get in there is, is good. I don't think I was able to... I went for stone skin probably, but that was dispelled. No shooting, so we go through to combat, and I only managed to do the one wound to the Hope Harvester. So out of the... I think he was striking first, so I must have had 12 attacks, uh, 9 impact hits... Oh, well, 12 impact hits, which would have been wounding on 6s... So I think that I underperformed a little bit there in that combat, uh, and then he passed his check to stick around, um, which, you know, it's disappointing. Uh, I think I probably should have done better, like on average, but, um, you know, I've got, I've got the static combat rest to stick around and um, potentially grind him through the supernal wounds. Um, down at the bottom, though, um, uh, again, I think he issued a challenge uh, a duel and i had to accept with the might duke because you know otherwise i don't get to attack so uh, it was only him attacking and out of the six wounds i guess it has six wounds uh omen yeah six wounds i managed to do five to the courtesan um which was potentially a little bit unlucky um i think i'm hitting it on threes threes goes to twos goes to threes yeah I, i'm hitting it on threes with the uh, distracting and with my questing oath so threes with a reroll of ones then twos to wound it with rerolling ones i managed to get five through on it um so very close to wiping it out on one go which would have been really nice but again that's fine i can deal with that again next turn um not ideal but i think i might need to be lucky so i, I you know it, it's still helping me dig me out of the hole that i've dug myself into so um you know that that's all good um go to turn four uh the miser charges into the aspirant combat to try and help out the uh the engine of damnation i think i didn't move across with my combat reform because i didn't want to bring the bloat flies in um i'm less scared of the miser than the bloat flies i think because it, they just bring in more combat res more attacks i can't attack it back quite so easily so uh, that's where I stayed. That's why I stayed where I was. Um, and the Blazing Glory on the left takes the bait with those Realm Knights and charges into its flank. 
So both of those charges make it in, uh, and then in moves, the, mo the moor is now out of arc of sight of my questing knights, so moves over to the left um, to get into the flank of those units and cause a little bit of a block up there. Uh, the Myrmidons on the other side continue their trudge towards the secondary objective, and the bullet flies back off a little bit, uh, knowing that my, my Might Duke and my Green Knight are going to be free for some long charges next turn. Um, post Magic, uh, he gets off Deceptive Glamour on my Might Duke to bring me down to Offensive 6 instead of 8, um, which means I'm now hitting... Well, I think I'm still hitting it on 3s, but he's hitting me more easily. And I think he strikes before I do as well. Uh, so I think he was hoping to try and get a couple wounds in and just kill me before I get to attack him. Nothing else goes down in magic though, so post-combat. Uh, I do manage to inflict the final wound on the courtesan. Whether or not that was through combat res or actually wounding it, I can't remember. But either way, that's dealt with now. So I face the realm knights out off to the right-hand flank, um, ready to start... Well, with giving me the option to start potentially dealing with the Myrmidons. Uh, the Might Duke faces up towards the centre so it can see as many targets as possible for what I might need for him next turn. Um, and in the top left, the Blazing Glory goes into the flank of my guys. Uh, I issue a duel with my champion to save the rest of the unit. The champion dies. Uh, I lose combat, but I do manage to make it away um, with my flea move, uh, which is nice. So the combat with my miser and uh, with, with the miser the enzo the hope harvester and the knight's aspirant uh, i think through mostly combat res but i might have done a couple of wounds to the hope harvester anyway um but he's now down to one wound two wounds um and i've still got plenty of ranks there which is nice uh, it's all good for me so equitane turn four i declare a charge with my quests into the flank of the blazing glory and that's it for charges so i could have gone into those myrmidons with the might duke and potentially with the knights of the realm as well um but i if i kill that unit like the the champion issues a duel my might duke has to accept so that's him neutered for that combat if i do manage to kill enough of them then i go through and then i'm suddenly staring at bloat flies and myrmidons who can then counter charge me so I decide to preserve my points instead. Uh, I'm a little bit... like As much as I'd like to challenge for the secondary objective, I don't think I've got enough units to do so. Um, at the very most, I can hope to draw it if I do well in the top left. So I go for conserving points on my Knights of the Realm. They move off to the left-hand corner, and I move my Might Duke more towards the centre, uh, where it can potentially charge into a combat to deal with uh, some of the monsters there. Oh, and I uh, I rally those fleeing Knights of the Realm as well. Uh, I set it up in a in that conga line there to try and act as chaff for the more of a Khan getting into the flank of my questing knights. Um, in hindsight, that was a bad idea. I could have just gone for a full rank instead. Um, I could have set myself in such a way that I'd redirect him in a different position. Um... You know, there, there are just better things that I could have done with that unit, so that's a bit of a mistake on my end. Um, uh, so, my turn for magic. I managed to get a regrowth off on the Aspirant Knights, so I grow back another four guys, uh, which is great, because that gives me my full ranks again. Uh, it also gives me a, ch a champion to issue a duel to the Miser again to stop it from killing anything uh, else in the rest of my unit or potentially any counter charges that I might get however with how I've positioned my might duke uh, he now can't charge past the end of the uh, aspirant knight unit because uh, he'd have to wheel first so well at least for charging into the hope harvester side he can still wheel round to a point I think and hit the miser I might not even be able to do that. So I think my positioning there, well, my positioning there is just poor. Uh, I, I could have done with pointing more um, more towards the right so I could have a move forward, then a wheel, and then a charge into a unit because, of course, I can still see him because he's gigantic. Um, so a bit of a mistake there on my part. Um, I don't manage anything else in magic. Um, there's no shooting. So we go through to combat. I... 
with my new static combat res that I've got from the ranks there, I do manage to inflict enough through the supernal damage to kill the Hope Harvester and inflict four wounds on the Miser, which is great. Uh, and then with my combat reform, I got myself as wide as possible uh, and then moved up out of line of sight of the Bloat Flies and Veil Serpents so they can't charge me in, in my flank and rescue their general now, which is nice. It also gives me an avenue for my Grail Knights to go through onto that flank as well, which is nice. Uh, in the questing knight combat, I made a boo-boo. <laughs> um, with me charging into his flank, I have a charge, a flank, a big flank, two ranks, and two banners. So I've got a static combat res of seven, and I issued a duel. Or either he issued a duel and then I accepted. Um, I could have quite easily turned it down and then let him attack what he liked. Um, and just killed him with the static combat res. As it was, um, you know, with all that static combat res, even if he kills my BSB uh, and I lose that and I lose the wounds from it, I'm still winning combat by a good few. And he's then down to a discipline six check or lower potentially. Um, but Blazing Glories, when they're in a duel for a com round of combat, they are stubborn until the end of the player turn. Which means I go in, he either he issued a duel or I issued a duel to try and protect the rest of my unit, which was daft. Um, and then he makes his stubborn 9 check. So he then makes a combat reform to face into my front, so I've no longer got the, got the flank. Um, I'm stuck on that Blazing Glory now, and the, with how I've set up my Knights of the Realm, the Moor of Akan can quite easily charge into my flank, break them or kill them, and then overrun into the flank of the Questing Knights, bringing in a big flank and just a big monster that's... Terrible, terrible news for me, basically, um, because I issued a duel that I really shouldn't have done. Um, so going into Demon Turn 5, that's exactly what happens uh, with the Moor. He charges into the flank of the Realm Knights, offering the overrun into the Questing Knights. Uh, the Dominion goes on to the Blazing Glory on the left, and the Veil Serpents and Bloatflies um, are just moving away from my Killy, my Duke and Green Knight, essentially. Uh, the moment on now that I've definitely given up on the secondary objective, I'm going to be losing a couple of scoring units this turn, probably. Um, well, depending, I'm going to be using losing the Realm Knights at the very least, which leaves me with only two... Well, basically I'm making it more and more difficult for my to, me to score the secondary objective, giving away the Realm Knights. I've then only got the three scoring units, so... With the the Myrmidons in the bottom right, with me turning around, the Might Duke going back to the center, there's no point in him going for anything else now. So they're just moving in such a way that they guarantee the secondary objective, regardless of what else I do now. Post Magic, he gets off, uh, I think that's Spectral Blades on the Blazing Glory, which isn't good for my guys. Uh, there's also Smite the Believer on there, so that's either Strength or AP. I think it's the Strength. I think Strength has gone down, so I'm now only Strength 5 with my Great Weapons, which isn't good. And there's Deceptive Glamour on the Aspirant Knights as well, so that they're now Offensive and Defensive 1. Um, so we go through to Combat. Uh, we do the Maw and the Knights of the Realm first, uh, because it's of course it's the Demon's turn, so he gets to pick. So uh, he hits me, kills a good couple of me. I don't think I rolled very well on my saves, but he's got enough combat res to break me. Uh, I flee, he catches me, and he makes the six inch overrun into the flank of my realm knight, uh, into the flank of my questing knights. I think the, um, I think I managed to inflict a couple of wounds on the more of a Khan with my breath weapon. Um, but also I'm in the wrong position for that, so I, that might have been what I was wanting to do, but I wasn't able to because of where I was positioned. Uh, and then between the Spectral Blades and the Moor of Akan, and I think out of eight wounds he did to me, um, even saving on a four plus and then a five plus, I don't remember. I, I, I took a whole load of saves. I rolled really terribly for them. I lost like six knights, and then that just loses all my static combat res. I'm no longer steadfast. Um, I break. Um, he forces me to flee from Blazing Glory, and both units pursue. He catches me, which kills my my questing knights and my BSB, and the more of a Khan ends up in the flank of my Grail knights. So, terrible mistake on my part there, offering the duel, um, and then setting up the overcharge, uh, the over overrun through the realm knights onto my units. So, yeah, not great. Um, the 
Aspirants lose a couple of guys, uh, but they don't lose combat, so that combat continues, and we go to Aquitaine turn 5. Uh, so my Green Knight and uh, Might Duke uh, move through the gap in the centre and point in different directions, ready to move up, uh, ready to counter charge in my final turn next turn. Um, try and score some points off of those two greater demons and try and protect my units. Um, it, again, it, it's sort of protecting my points at this point rather than trying to win. Um, and same for the Realm Knights in the bottom left. They go and hide as far as they can in the corner. Um, post magic, I get entwining roots on the more of a Khan. Uh, try and help out that combat. And uh, I'm going to be steadfast, but I haven't got a BSB reroll, so I need to help that combat as much as I can. Otherwise, I grow back two aspirants in the miser combat, and I get stone skin off on there. So they are now resilient six. Uh, post combat. Uh, I lose one guy to a duel, I think, with the Miser, because uh, I regrow grow the champion uh, with uh, with raised spells as a priority. Um, I don't lose any Grail Knights to the more of a Khan, and I pass my reform check to get myself, um, I think, out of arc of... Well, certainly out of the line of sight of the Blaze and Glory, so he can't flank charge me, which is nice. Um, and we go through to Demon's turn six. So he charges the Bloatflies into the flank of my Aspirant Knights, um, hoping to break that unit and get them away from his Miser. Um, if he brings in enough combat res, then I'm not going to be able to wipe out the Miser finally. Um, and the Blazing Glory and the Veiled Serpents move to chaff up my Green Knight and Might Duke, respectively, uh, from getting into the combats to uh, protect those units on the final turn. So post magic, uh, he gets deceptive glamour off on my Grail Knights uh, to kind of even that fight over there, and then post combat, uh, I managed to kill off one of the bloat flies. Uh, he only kills one of me. I'm still resilient six, which is nice, um, and I do a couple of wounds more to the more of a Khan with my static combat res, which is good. Uh, so my turn six. Uh, both the Green Knight and the Might Duke go into the uh, chaff that they've been offered to try and grab their points. Um, in Magic, I managed to get Entwining Roots on Blazing Glory to make it slightly easier for my Might Duke to hit him, otherwise I'm hitting on threes, so I make it twos just to make sure that I do actually get those points. Uh, Post-combat, um, I managed to roll really, really well on my Grail Knights. I think I rolled a couple of sixes on the wounds. And of course, with divine attacks, I go through his saves. Although he's got, he's got fortitude. Either way, I do a couple of wounds to the blazing uh, to the more of a Khan, and then with my static combat res, then I manage to pop him and get all his points from that, which is great. Um, the might duke makes short work of the blazing glory, which is nice. Um, the green knight does a couple of wounds to the veil serpents, but not enough to grab half points for them. And the Knight's Aspirant, unfortunately, don't manage to uh, inflict enough this turn. I don't think I had um, Stone Skin off on them this turn, so they lo lose a whole load of guys, lose combat, and then break from combat, and then flee away from the Miser into the ruins and lose like the final guy that they needed to lose to give up half points. Which was a shame, but, you know, that happens. Uh, which takes us to the final score at long last. I think this is going to be quite a long one depending on how much I can edit it down by. Um, yes, so the final score, uh, he's won the secondary objective, and that leaves it at a 6-14. to 14. So I think considering how catastrophic it looked at the end of turn 2 with my general dead, half my army surrounded, um, you know, not many favourable charges, I think this is a decent result, but um, I probably could have done better to not put myself in that position at the beginning of the game. I managed to bring it back relatively well, um, but then giving up the Questing Knights and the Realm Knights and my BSB really threw that away at the end of the game. I mean, potentially the Blazing Glory still kills me um, and kills my BSB and makes that more difficult on that flank anyway, but I just made it harder for myself by accepting that challenge um, and letting that go through that way. Um, potentially I could have done more to challenge for the secondary objective as well. I very much gave up on that at the first opportunity. Um, which, you know, is never a good idea. That, that's putting you six points behind 
just straight off the bat, which isn't good. But yeah, good game. Um, very, very close um, in the end. Um, I, I think I did relatively well to dig myself out of a hole. Um, and six points from a loss, you know, I, I think I can take that and be pleased with it. So uh, going on to round two, I'll not be quite at the bottom of the table, but um, hoping to improve, I think. So thank you very much for watching. Um, I think this has been quite a long one. Um, hopefully you've found it interesting still. Uh, and I will catch you in the next one.